this video is about a summary of all the antifungals. Uh, I have talked about each and every antifungal before. Now this is the summary of all the antifungals, but I will only go through the clinical use because we have to be able to remember if we have a certain disease, what drug are we going to give? If we have a certain fungal disease, what are the options? We should be able to see those options right in front of our uh, in front of our eyes whenever we're thinking of an antifungal. So this is my effort to kind of summarize the clinical uses of all the antifungals together. So now let's see if we can if we, if we can achieve this uh, purpose. The first one is amphotericin B. Like I mentioned, amphotericin B makes holes in the cell walls, leaking the electrolytes out. That was the mechanism of action. What about the clinical use? I use the mnemonic A, B, C, 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 H, M. A, B, C, they follow each other. And then there's three C's and then H, M. So let's see if we can remember. A for aspergillus. Pretty much they're used for systemic mycosis, which makes everything um, easy. They're for systemic mycosis, but I still like to kind of remember some names um, just for my peace of mind. So B is going to be for blastomyces. C is for coxoides, coxoidioides. The other C is for candida. And this C is for cannot cross blood brain barrier. H is H is going to be for histoplasma. M N and M is going to be for mucor. So those are the clinical use for amphotericin B. A for amphotericin. A for aspergillus, and that's how you can remember what's after A, B, then C, 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 cannot cross blood brain barrier, histoplasma, and mucor. Can we use amphotericin B for meningitis because it cannot cross blood brain barrier? Yes, we can because we use it intrathecally. Okay, we use it intrathecally. Now, what are the toxicities for amphotericin B? I'll be fast with it. It's Sean poked hole. I talk about amphotericin B toxicity in that video, but I will just say it out loud. So Sean S for shake and bake, so fever, shake and chills. A for arrhythmia. The next A is going to be for anemia. And H is going to be for hydration. Hydration is going to make uh, nephrotoxicity um, better. N is going to be for nephrotoxicity. Poked P is going to be for phlebitis and whole H is going to be for hypotension. So those are the toxicities of amphotericin B. Done. Moving on to caspofungin. It starts with C. We must use it for candida. Uh, what about A? Aspergillus. Okay, we use it for these two, uh, these two fungus. What about the mechanism of action, caspofungin? It inhibits beta-glucan. Okay, the G for glucan, the G also for GI upset. Uh, another toxicity is going to be for flushing, so that's also there. So ca that's caspofungin. What about nystatin? This one no one needs to know. Remember, we all know that we use it for candida. Okay, swish and swallow um, for candida and for diaper rash. What about terbinafine? Terbinafine inhibits the enzymes squalene epoxidase and it's used for. Uh, skin infection, so dermatophytis, and we use it for oncomycosis. What's oncomycosis? It's the infection of the nails, remember? What about azoles? Now, for azoles, for, clu for fluconazole, there's the three C's, okay? By the way, azole inhibits P450 which inhibits the conversion of lanosterol to ergosterol, remember? So this first C is going to be for candida. The next is going to be for cryptococcus. This one um, is for AIDS patient, cryptococcus in AIDS patient because fluconazole has the ability to cross blood-brain barrier. And that 
last C is going to be for can cross blood brain barrier. Okay, so those are the three C's for fluconazole. What about the others? Uh, what about ketoconazole? Those are blastomyces, coxoides, coxoidioides, candida for the C, H is going to be for hypercortisolism. And the last H is going to be for histoplasma. You must be wondering, why am I adding candida here when I already had candida here? Now remember that these three C's are for fluconazole. Okay, fluconazole. That's the one that can cross blood brain barrier. These, these five are for ketoconazole. Okay, ketoconazole. And that's why we're again using candida here. And clotrimazole, the C is for clotrimazole and meconazole. So clotrimazole and meconazole. These are the two which we are going to be using. We're going to be using for topical infections, okay? These are going to be for topical infections so those are my um, toxicities for um, sorry those are my clinical use for my azole so here is the interesting one we see that we even use um, uh, azoles for for hypercortisolism now why do we use it for hypercortisolism is because the azoles, ketoconazole, has the ability to inhibit steroid synthesis, right? So that's why we use it for hypercortisolism. Now those are my azoles. Moving on to griseofulvin. Remember griseofulvin, that's the one which inhibits the microtubules, right? And we use it for dermatophytis, okay? The D for dermatophytis. And T is going to be for tinea. The ringworm okay so you see that we you have we have two drugs so far for dermatophytes there is the terbinafin and griseofulvin kind of falls in the same category right griseofulvin and terbinafin terbinafin acts at the level of uh, squalene to lenosterol and griseofulvin works at the level of microtubules Okay. Then we have the pyrimidine synthesis inhibitors by conversion to 5-fluorouracil. Those are the flucytosin. Okay. And there is flucytosin is also used for systemic mycosis because it's used in combination with amphotericin B. So some examples are candida and cryptococcus. Okay. These are some examples. Okay. And these are with in combination with amphotericin B because they're used for systemic mycosis. So those are the, all the clinical use of the antifungals all together. Hope that was helpful.